Ah, I beat her tonight. For I must be indisposed at the moment. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. Uh, it is Wednesday, um, which means it is the last stream we're going to have into, uh, well, I'll still be streaming, but I have to start my on-call tomorrow. You know how that went the last time. Yo, Star, welcome in. How you been? Hype indeed. Cheers to everybody who's in here early, by the way. This one goes to you. Oh. So, um, with the oncoming on-call week, which sucks, um, I'm going to move the Chilla Arts Games marathon that I was going to try to do over the course of a few streams. Um to whatever we, whenever we're next, probably tomorrow. Um, and instead, we're going to do something different tonight. I'm not too, too bad, Star. Uh, can't complain that much, really. Things are good. And things are great now. RK's in here. How we doing, RK? Welcome in. Oh, excuse me. It's been an interesting day. Not a bad day, just interesting. Excuse me. Woo. Yeah, doing good, doing good. Um, I'm excited to play this game. I've had this one for a few months, and I I've been told by a lot of people that I should play it, and I should have played it before tonight, but here we are. Other things came up. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't know if anyone here has played the Stanley Parable before, but this is apparently is the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. I don't know if it was like a rehash of the game, or just like, Includes all DLCs in it or something. Uh, it was a decent price, so I said, let's do it. <clears throat> so, um, other news. Uh, oh, we have uh, a few new followers from when we were offline the last uh, couple days. So, we have Brave Dave, Nguyen Bao 29601, Tyson from NC. And Revis Tron. I wonder if that's a Darrell Revis reference. Uh, I'm glad that everyone seems to know each other. It's always always seems to be the way in chat. I like that. Uh, so yeah, we have the new followers. So we're up to 456. We're 44 followers away from this awful follower goal that I thought was a good idea about 200 followers ago. Uh, <laughs> it's not good. Um, but it is what it is. And... I'm still working on some planning for Jugtober uh, for this year, so I have a good chunk of games in mind that I want to play, but at the same time, um, I'm also coming up with cool uh, milestone redemptions and more of them, um, just because I feel like if I have more of them, they're easily more easily met, and the content will just write itself for the month. I feel it'd be pretty good. Um, <clears throat> so I've been away for so long, have things to work out? Hey, I apologize for that. Life and family and all that stuff, that's gonna come first every time. You know, if, if you wanna come back and stream, you come back and stream. If you don't, you don't. Either way, as long as you're putting yourself first with your loved ones, I think that's what matters most. Uh, and your health, of course. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can't see the amount of times I've dumped out of doing streams just because of like either a mental health day or like a physical issue or whatever. Yeah, exactly. But she said it in a lot less words <laughs> and a lot more straightforward. Um, we are happy to have you, of course, anytime. Meanwhile, um, I don't think I have any other news. I think that's really it. All right, cool. Uh, Stanley Parable, let's do it. <coughs> Excuse me, Jesus. All right, so I already hooked up all the settings and everything, so we should be good to go. Let's, uh, let's, let's whoa. How many, how many computers are in there? <laughs> the end is never, the end is never, or 
Maybe different. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Uh, naturally, okay. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Seven too many. Employee number 427's job was Ooh, you two, the rebranding. He awesome. He his desk in room 427 and he put oh, okay. on the keyboard. Listen, listen, Orders came to him me. through a monitor on his desk. Exciting. Telling him what Please let me know when you have official details. I'll make sure to spread the word, of course. Order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. data entry guy and although others might have considered it soul rending stanley relished every moment that the orders came in as though he had been made exactly for this job and stanley was happy yeah, and then no one problem. day something very peculiar happened the stanley something pair. that would forever change stanley something he would never quite forget he had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized Just, that not it? one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. Oh. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. COVID? Something was very clearly wrong. <laughs> Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, it had been he ten got years. up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Oh, I have to step out of my office. Oh, I'm Stanley. And I have no legs! Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Everyone's Stanley decided gone. to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. That's a good possibility. Where's the meeting room? In here? No, it's a big room. No. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Hmm. What happens if I go to the door on the right? See, I have to do it. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Of course. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully immaculate? constructed room. Immaculate? Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Drinking it all in? There's no coffee. But That's eager good. to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Okay, fine. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door. It's a bold and strategy, got back on Cotton. Track. Let's see if it pays off for him. <laughs> Thank Yet you, Mr. there Fathom. was not a single person here either. Welcome in, buddy. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Whiteboard Stanley manager. decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping Termination he Tuesdays. We're broke Wednesdays. <laughs> What to do about 432? Don't tell 432 about this meeting. Jesus. Alright, where am I supposed to go again? I wasn't paying attention. Jesus. Oh, God. What is hot? Profits, 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 profits. I don't know. Where am I? Am I going this way? Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay. Oh, of course he's on the top floor. What was I thinking? Hello? Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief Ooh. who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, <laughs> Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. What the fuck? 
Jesus, fuck. Hi, Meanie. Why is the narrator not talking anymore? So it's because we're at the end of the first chapter. Descending chapters deeper in into areas. the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why this did he feel job. this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Lovely. Stanley walked straight ahead through oh. a large door that read Mind Control Facility. Uh. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Nope. Okay, that was a funny joke. But of course, Stanley thought better of it and realized he simply had too much to live for. Jesus Christ. The lights rose on an enormous Whoa. room packed with television screens. What horrible was it that secret from did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Hopefully. It goes way down there too. Shit. Can't do anything with those. Okay. Just security. Now the monitors jump to life. Their true nature revealed. Oh. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. And that's Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, right there. eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Jesus. Okay, next. I guess that's an this elevator. This mind control facility. It was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's Fired. control all this <laughs> time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe no. it. No. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control. Pirate. Never. It was unthinkable. Hey, it's Steve the Wasn't Pirate. It? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Yeah, probably. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. Okay. For he would dismantle the controls once oh, thanks, and Star. for all. Appreciate the points. <clears throat> Alright, let's see. Am I able to destroy this thing? I can't read it all the way over there. Off. Hello? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. A rising chill of uncertainty is right. Was it over? <laughs> Thanks, Meanie. Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. I don't think so. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. 
for it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. I think it I'm about to be mind controlled. The only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. I don't. I'm not really buying this. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley oh, thank you, Bud Cheek, for the points. Happy. Ah, I got flashbanged. Why do games have to do that? Fuck. I beat the game. Get your first achievement. All of his co-workers were gone. So, oh, this is mean? a multiple ending type Stanley of game. Stanley decided okay. to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. When Some Stanley to came left. to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. It's the meeting room. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Talk Stanley less. decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. My boss's office. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. No, I didn't. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Jesus fucking goddamn it. Thank you, Mr. Fathom. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any uh... logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Ah, uh, yeah. Simply repeating. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion you, sir, that it had been on nothing. the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. Oh, yeah. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. Jesus. So he imagined himself flying. And began to gently float above the ground. What the fuck? Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled Oof. that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in Fucking my head? Fucking bullshit! Everything that I'm doing and thinking. <laughs> now the voice was describing itself <laughs> being this. considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, 
This was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew ah! so that this was in fact a dream. Anox. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. Okay. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, uh. the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. And? Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Opens his Let eyes. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Nope. Stanley began screaming. Please, <laughs> someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Uh. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Wh who? What happened to Stanley? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, oh, and then shit. collapsed dead on the sidewalk. <laughs> and although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. <laughs> Gotta run. Very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Uh. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, that's another ending. Go. Pretty much what was just happening, correct. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. All right, this time I'll go to the boss's office. Correctly. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided Three to go back up to his room to a staircase. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I'm taking the bathroom. I've got the feeling money's for stealing, but not yours, of course. See, that's a lovely purse. Extreme bathrooms. Okay. Anything around here I can use? No. Well, that was a fun uh, bathroom trip. Let's go on ahead. What about to the right? Oh my god. Business strategy? <laughs> There's a fucking pistol pointed at the fucking head of a panda. Oh my word. 
I'm out. It was been Stanley. What the fuck? Uh, how high up am I going? God damn it. So that's the whole point I bet. Is that you, ah, you know what? Let's try going down and see what happens. I bet you it's the same thing. Oh, it's time, baby. Demon! Welcome, pal. Hope you're doing well. What you uh, what are you playing tonight? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this elevator does nothing. Yep, it does nothing in either direction. Great. I'm doing okay. He's playing some Stanley Stepping Parable. Into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Fuck, I think we're screwed and I have to do this again. Stanley just sat around grinding. twiddling his thumbs. Uh, trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2 I tried z four, five. I tried zero four five one already. It didn't work. He, he legitimately gives it to you. But I've already entered it and did what happens behind it. Two, the... eight, four, five. <laughs> it's getting pissed. La -da -da. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in. And the door just opened for itself. <laughs> and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> Nothing to do with this. So I have to take the elevator. Probably the only way to go is up. Yep. Or down, rather. Shit. Grinding in Fortnite. No oh, wolf. Stanley walked straight ahead oh, right. to the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Where to go through the escape? Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Let's do it. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to you turn around jump. and get back on track. I have an achievement in life that you can't At jump. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Do I just fall down a hole? Yep.
Wait, what? Jesus. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, oh! he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned no! and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. No, God, no, please, no. Ah! Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed um. every bone in his body, killing him instantly. No, it didn't. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office <laughs> as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, mm -hmm. death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Ah. Do you see now? Yes. Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Ah, oh, I see. Just make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. This blueprint shows that obviously in the beginning of the game, the path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development through the core layout, though the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. That's pretty crazy. And then you hit this, and this is when a whole second part was made. The office. Wow. All right, so which way do I go here? Left or right? Check the left. The office. And what's the other way? The main gist of the game is that you keep getting different endings of how Stanley office clock uh, dealt with uh, what happens with his, his everyday job kind of turned upside down when he uh, now look closely Stanley see how it's impossible for the player to do basically determined that, uh, that everyone was missing, disappeared. Textbook mistake. Oh, I don't know. It's the kind of thing you pick up on intuitively for, him, for all his fundamental understanding of good and bad game design. But of course, you being you, you'll probably spend the next hour trying to solve it. Here, I'm just going to make this easy on you. And finally, he pushed the... Yeah, it's been an interesting game. The very first incarnation of the freedom ending in the game's alpha. Oh, wow. That was the beta freedom ending? Okay. Countdown room? Yeah, I've been there. Escape menu? Oh. Huh. Zending. The screen shows picks an early version of the ending known as the Zending, which was eventually cut and merged with another part of the game. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Ending went through many iterations. This rumor since the fourth version of the ending, and we thought it was complete, but decided to abandon and change it again shortly before launch. Of course. Trailers ran four major teaser trailers over the course of the game's development, each meant to convey something about the spirit of the game. This is the first one released in May 2012. Features a series of broken rooms in the voice there, informing viewers that he is repairing a new version of the Stanley Parable. Huh.
Obey, disobey, lounge to maintenance. Yep. The other entrance would be hidden depending on how you entered. One door to maintenance and lounge in the original back on track option. What about this? What? Flow of hallways following the first two doors was important to get right. Since players will replay them so many times, discuss a number of designs, but ultimately it was the simplest version that won out. I don't know how many endings there are actually. Interesting. Cargo lift. Okay. Actually, I want to see in the... Uh, yeah, apparently there's... 11 achievements, and I've got three already. Get your first achievement. Awarded for getting any of the other achievements as your first. Okay. Uh, beat the game. Complete the Stanley Parable. You can't jump. No, seriously, we disabled it. Uh, test achievement. Please ignore. Test achievement description. Replace this. <laughs> God. Welcome back. Quit the game and then start it again. Play the Stanley Parable for the entire duration of a Tuesday. What? It 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 bunch of eights. Click on door four thirty five times. Okay. Speed run. Complete the Stanley Parable under four minutes twenty two seconds, not including load times. Set all setting sliders in the menu to all the available numbers. Is that seriously an achievement? Don't play the Stanley Parable for ten years. Shit. So I don't really know how many endings there truly are or what else I'm supposed to be doing with the game. <laughs> Fuck. I was like, someone, I was reading this, it was going to take like two hours. Are you a rock? 88 quintragentillion 888 <laughs> what you are gentillion 888 retragentillion 888 duo trigentillion 888 untrigentillion 800 trillion trigentillion 888 novum gentillion 888 octovigentillion 888 septvigentillion 888 sexvigentillion 888 quinvigentillion Eight hundred and eighty-eight quarter of eight hundred and eighty-eight trevigent illion, eight hundred and eighty-eight you owe eight hundred and eighty-eight unvigent illion, eight hundred and eighty-eight vigent illion, eight hundred and eighty-eight novem decillion, eight novem decillion, eight octo decillion, eight hundred and eighty-eight septen decillion, eight hundred and eight. 88 sex decillion 888 quindecillion 888 quatu or decillion 888 three decillion 888 duo decillion 888 un decillion 888 decillion 888 known illion 888 octillion 888 septillion 888 Eight sextillion eight hundred and eighty-eight quadrillion eight hundred and eighty-eight quadrillion eight hundred and eighty-eight trillion eight hundred and eighty-eight billion eight hundred and eighty-eight million eight hundred and eighty-eight thousand eight hundred and eighty-eight. Thank you. All right. This says exit. <laughs> oh, look at these two! How they wish to destroy one another! How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But uh. listen to me. You can still save those two. You How? can stop the program before they both fail. How? Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. 
As long what? as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now, and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let. I had to let it happen. <laughs> I want to do that again, but longer. Oh, God. Back in the office? Hey! Right, what was the other one? Where's 430? All of his co workers were gone. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. <laughs> now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost. I, I'm way past 50, 50 clicks, okay. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? Okay. Where's 417? Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. <laughs> Wait, four, three, seven? All right, here. Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. 415. This is wild. Now, back to door number 437. What the fuck is he doing? Uh, what the fuck am I doing? Let's see, how about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine. All right, back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Oh, my God. Okay, now go climb on employee 419's desk. What? <laughs> okay. Yes! This is great! You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. We've almost got it! Now the copy machine, do that one it's again! On Deborah's desk. <laughs> the copy machine again! Have a lovely night, Mr. Fathom. Finish it off, Stanley! Five clicks on door 430! Yes! We did it! <laughs> oh, wow. Sean Harris is a mindfucker, that's for sure. Oh, you really I got the achievement. Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. <laughs> really, now? What were you thinking? I was thinking of all the instructions. Okay, next. Uh, I don't know what to do with the eights. And everything else kind of seems goofy. Where's all the eights? Oh, no, I can do I want to look for those other endings, apparently, that were over here. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. 
Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now too horrible no even to consider. Here. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope, I'm not doing it. Fuck off. Stanley was so bad at following directions, <laughs> it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. <laughs> penalty for misuse of cargo lift, thousand dollars. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, five thousand dollars. Oh shit. Okay. Can I open this door? A key card. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. Of course. There's someone you've been neglecting, I guess Stanley. I could jump here. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by this, yourself. Yeah. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Nah. Leave a voicemail, I'm busy. Do, 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 do. do, do, do. Um any reason why nothing else is happening? Hoping it was going to go, but I guess we have to pick it up. Ah, uh, because it's an ending. Okay. Fine. Huh? Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry I also live in apartment 427. Oh, right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Whoops. They want to commit their life to you. I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder I don't think he's that none at all. of it would ever happen to him. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought 
excited him terribly. Spent time with the boys. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too oh, I still don't think he's boring. Remember. He's telling a very important story. As he wandered through this fantasy oh, God. world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Tell your kids the story. It was such a wonderful <laughs> fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again and then again and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end that he might always feel this free. Mm. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. <laughs> Tell your wife you love her. But there is no answer. How <laughs> could there possibly be? Back in at reality, the office. All he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. Amen, dude. He won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. I have a good night, Demon. Take it easy, dude. Thanks again for the raid, and I appreciate you. Can I go somewhere else? I guess I have to press it. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I can't even see my own legs. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time you'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. Please die. And I tried again. <laughs> and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. <laughs> this game's fucking wild. So there's a. I think there's another option. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <sighs> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I wonder I'm if I can enemy, get really down to here. I realize that investing your trust in someone so else can go that be difficult, way. but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten go. about. What? Really? <laughs> I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad <laughs> to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. 
Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Just make sure I can't open this. Yeah, key card. Okay. They are so fucking funny. Now listen carefully, this is important. God damn it. Stanley walked through the red door. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating <laughs> properly. Stanley walked <laughs> through the red door. All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Do you see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map <laughs> because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing, because this <laughs> is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. What the fuck? Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. A one? I mean, I can understand if you had reservations, you saw ways the game could be improved to more fully express itself mechanically and artistically, but a one? That's not even helpful. What am I supposed to do with that? Uh, but I guess it isn't my place to judge. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. World War Leaderboard? What is this? Two seconds? Only the worst three percent. This is you. If you're actually ranked at the very end. I have some friends for help. Error, friends list empty. Ha ha ha! 98.9% of players are more attractive than Stanley. A dead rat is objectively ranked. <laughs> God damn it. That's fucking funny. Alright, cool. No. Would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. I, uh... In this game, what the, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right. And if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So oh. why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Sure. Be sure to keep notes on your experience. Absolutely.
You heartless bastard. <laughs> Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Aha! Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stan? Is this Firewatch? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Uh. Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower. Like Perhaps creep for tower. some sort of twist the S's. purpose. Hmm. <laughs> yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Sure. Ooh. Goddamn staircase scared me. Oh, no. No, 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 no. It can't be. What? No, it can't be what? It is. It's an open world game. Oh. Good God, quickly, block it off. <laughs> oh. Thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You nearly wandered off into that... that... thing. That big, open, just wandering around. No right or wrong directions. No path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, oh, oh. oh thank heavens we avoided it. Christ. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think this will be just the thing. Is this Wonderful. fucking See, this rocket league? See, exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. I'm pretty sure if I just run into the goal, I'll explode. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. Sports ball. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Yeah, <laughs> if it says I think right. surely we must. <laughs> okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Well, I want to run into the goalpost first. Hold on. What are you doing? <laughs> Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. Oh, How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. Oops. Getting kind of different. Of course, am I looking for four twenty seven? Yep. I'm working. Oh! Jesus Christ. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. 
I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end, to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. Jesus. I can wait. <laughs> I can wait. <laughs> I have to go. Phone is dying. Have a great stream. Uh, thank you, Star. Appreciate you. Be good. Thanks for dropping in. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? All right, I'm gonna try going Stanley for that red door to go this to the time. meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? <laughs> I guess I'm not going to the red door. for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley good Parable girl. <laughs> was a video game released in 2013 true, true. on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content <laughs> that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. I'm sure. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... Uh, oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to <laughs> the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. It's going to be like two minutes. Mm. Mm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if, um, oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. All right. All right, let's see. It's the jump circle. Oh my gosh, amazing. <laughs> oh. Is is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? Yes. If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley uh Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if, oh wait, there's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. I'm ready for whatever it is. <laughs> That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, 
test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. Oh, it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. <laughs> if you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley Parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. What do you say, friend? Well, I didn't have a choice. All right, so I guess we'll try for the red door now. Um, this is new. Psst, Stanley, come over here in the vent. Wait. I want to show you something. It's kind of creepy, dude, but uh, fine. Okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new Ultra Deluxe content turned out to be? Well, yes. it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. I call it the Memory Zone. Oh. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. You see, Stanley, doesn't the Memory Zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? <laughs> the Last of Us. I remember back in October of 2013 when the game originally launched. Thank you for the back host. Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. <laughs> That's why. First dollar. Don't play for five years. It's impossible to get this achievement. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this Don't stunning read any reviews except for this one. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes, and I quote, Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim, it was Persona 3, it was all of them, and now it's nothing. It's no games at oh, all. Oh yeah, the narrative's hilarious. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's a juggernaut, a husk bitch. Now, a lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. <laughs> it's down here. Oh. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone. To spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. Uh, I can't get in there. There's boxes in the way. 
I can't jump. <laughs> Fall Guys was too tiring. Yeah, I know. You did great. Okay. So let's go backwards. <sighs> These were simpler times, Stanley, but I wouldn't give to go back to have it all over again. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game oh, distributor. Oh, no. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's being collecting down oh, here. Oh, God. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. <laughs> the narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. <laughs> unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley, I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me <laughs> if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking Rona for is me. shit, I agree. I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear. What an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Oof. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations ah. of what's happened. Ah. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, <laughs> well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. We shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and... Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue for... <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption... <laughs> okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45... Stanley! Stanley! St Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 <laughs> hours! You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer, and my God, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button. And if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. Oh, Stanley, you're back. <laughs> you're back. Oh, my goodness. I have someone to talk to the again. The fucking light bulb's Stanley. dead. I think it's been a week, <laughs> or two weeks. I've been sitting here all that time, just sitting here, not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? There's Me sass too, up in here. What's up? Welcome nothing. in. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had... <laughs> He's point I'm in here anymore. Hello? Mr. Narrator. Mr. Narrator. I think he's truly dead. Smoke detector? How did that fall off the wall? They didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, Entertain, Entertain us. Entertain us. It wasn't us. enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then, he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the. Hello? He must be mad again. The end is never the end, 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 is never the end. What's that over there? Some leakage over here. Interesting. This is outrage. Plus, the person playing it is the joke. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god! Was that from the water? The pipes fucking bursting? Oh my god. Oh, Jesus Christ! What the fuck? How long have I been sleeping for? <laughs> yeah, see, I had a makers for all of us. Now what happened? All life's dead. Next, next, next. Oh shit. The button fell. What the fuck? Can I skip again? Nope. The skip button must have been broken. Which way do I walk? What the fuck? <laughs> this is fucking bizarre. Am I going to get a credit scene soon? We already got the credits, I forgot. Oh, there we go. Back to the office? Back to the office! <laughs> Alright, let's go for the red door. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. There's the new co New, new content. Oh good, you noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. Fine. It better not be the same shit we just did. 
Because that took forever. Oh my god, it is. Oh. You see, Stanley, I've not I played the original now. Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. <laughs> the original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. New hotness. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. <laughs> now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Here we are. Go on, try out some of the new features. Hear your name in the game. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, <laughs> what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button, which speaks the name of the person playing the game. There's not seen of bindings and Easter eggs. There's, uh, they're all in this one too. Oh. Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button <laughs> only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. God damn it. Here. Let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become Jim a person Jugs. named Jim. I w Jim. Whoa, 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 hold on. I wasn't finished setting up the backstory. <laughs> if you don't properly roleplay as Jim, then you'll never understand the impact of this button. Otherwise, it's just a stupid button that says somebody else's name. Okay, we're doing it again, and this time let me finish first. <clears throat> now, allow the yourself bucket to bucket ending? I don't think Jim. so. Imagine yourself driving to work as Jim. Jim. All right, fine, whatever. It's just a <laughs> meaningless button that says Jim. Are you happy now? Get out of here. I'm done with this button. Why don't you go humiliate me in front of a different feature that I worked very hard on? <laughs> this is so fucking funny. Oh my god. Maybe I'll only let people name Jim play the Stanley Parable t An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the, um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Infinite hole, free achievements. Look at that free achievement. <laughs> Pull the lever, receive your achievement, no more steps, it just works. Get yours right now. Okay. Now here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? 
Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes. You see, you'll come to this lever. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully God broken. God damn it. I wizard Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. God damn it, fix this now. I was all excited too. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. All right. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Well, we saw the jump circle. Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. <laughs> God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Reassurance bucket? Oh, God. Please, no screenshots. March. Oh, there's the reassurance bucket over there. I want some merch, damn it. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, anytime you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind Where's and the your bucket? heart. It's true. Oh. As long as you hold on to the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. <laughs> and to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Bucket is life, what a bucket pain is in the love. Ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. Sure. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. Well. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Take it back. All right, I'll just leave with it then. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That re okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on- Get well someday. Well someday happy 12th birthday, Stephanie. Which would you go with? You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Get well someday, it what? is. Or 
actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. What's down here? Oh, is this the infinite hole? Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. Okay. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top, and we can continue onward. No. We have that fall, hmm. guys. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Why? If it's infinite, what does it matter? Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Oh! Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Well, that sort of depends on your definition of infinity. Uh -oh. From one perspective, the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, well, good for you. You found the <laughs> bottom <laughs> of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. New mug. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated <laughs> by falling. Yes, what Candy, really. What person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe oh. you're the problem. Wow. <sighs> Uh, things got a little heated there. I think we both said some things we didn't mean. Why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the whole mostly infinite? Mostly infinite. If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Okay. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my I Oh, for heaven. <laughs> I was right. The problem is you. <laughs> the problem is that you like holes too much. <laughs> normal. A normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? Yep. I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. Correct. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole. I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do have so much more. Gosh, how could I have guessed? You're back in the hole. <laughs> if this starts to become a thing where... Wow. Okay. Yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. Well, there it is. The shame of my lie has come to haunt. How is this still appealing to you? <laughs> I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Okay. Hmm. Is the, um, teleport button not working? You sure? Well, I mean, 
I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. Still nothing? Well, I suppose... Uh, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. What? You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. Wow. I hope you and the hole have a wonderful rest of it. At least I got the bucket. I don't want peace, I want problems always. Did you lift the roof off of it? Hello? Who's that noise? Oh! Take the music, change your perspective. You're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed yeah, off there, drifting fuck? away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. Oh, no. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole. And I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. Toodle pip. Here we go again. No, maybe not. What? Here we are. Go on. Try out some oh. of the new features. All right, so we've done the reassurance bucket. This is mostly infinite hole. <laughs> there was something upstairs, I believe. I've done the jump circle already. Hmm. 
Settings World Champion. Check out the exit. With close epilogue, office decorations, research. Yeah, I think we've done it all here. Exit is E. Just right there. Yeah, I think I've done this all. game is fucking wild. All right. Have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? I believe so. That's why I'm going up these stairs. So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but... I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Hold on, let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes, yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go, version two. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course with respect, with care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? Mm, I suppose it could, but it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All, right. All right, perfect. Go ahead, take a look. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked God for a company in a big building where he the this fucking balloons. <laughs> what could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Why are people even these Stanley felt on? the bucket calling to him, begging him to pick it up. Whoop Why was he not doing it? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he and All right. I think uh I think that's going to do it for us today. This has been fucking wild. That <laughs> just says Stanley Parable too. <laughs> what the fuck? 
All right. Um, yeah, my back is starting to starting to go, and it's affecting my arm now. So uh, this was an interesting trip. I figured it was just something goofy we could do uh, tonight. I, I this is definitely a game. Um, interesting messages behind it. So tomorrow and through the next until next Thursday, um, I'm going to be on call. So it's going to be rough trying to play games on stream, but we're going to do it. I have one, two, three, four. I have four different Chilla Arts games I haven't played yet that are sitting installed on my desktop. We're going to be playing those. <laughs> Hi, Jugs. Bye, Jugs. <laughs> it's Cup Arc. How you doing? I'm glad you. Uh, I glad I caught you earlier today. I'm glad you caught me now today. Um. Yeah, there's a few of us here, so why don't we take a look to see who we can raid? If you all don't mind being part of the raid. By the way, here's the things, the raid messages, part up in chat. So for subscribers, you grab that. For followers, you can just grab the uh, the second bit there. Um, all that is is just uh, well, just you just pop it in once we get to wherever the hell we're gonna be raiding. So we got Creepy Pistero doing some games and demos. We got Max Bex doing Hunt Showdown. Nox is doing Phasmo. Wheeler's doing Valorant. Baloney Boy's doing Apex Legends. We got uh, Cornhus is doing Slender the Arrival. Damn. Cool, cool, cool. Hmm. Why don't we? Why don't we? I've never rated Creepy Pistero before. So why don't we, why don't we uh, raid Creepy? She's really cool. Um, met her through some other random branches of horror streamers on Twitter. Uh, she's in here quite a bit. So I wanna, I wanna shoot some love over her way. Uh, if you haven't followed her, toss her a follow. And then um, yeah, stick around for a while. See if you, uh, if you like what she has to offer. Um, other than that, we are done for tonight. And uh, yeah, we'll be doing some Chilla Art games tomorrow. I'm looking forward to them. Uh, Chilla Arts has done games like The Convenience Store, Night Delivery, uh, The Closing Shift. Uh, really, really good um, horror experiences. Fucking flying here. Uh, but that's going to do it. Let's get this raid up and going. Over to Creepy Pastero 27. There it is. All right. Kicking this raid off. Like I said, send a little bit of love over. It'd be awesome if you could. Um, and the raid message is right there. Please copy and paste it when you get over there. We'll copy it now. And then hit paste when you get there. That's it. That's what I want to say. Thank you, Candy. I hope you have a good day. And I'm sure I'll catch you uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, everybody.